Good evening, everyone. Hope everyone's doing great, having a great week so far. It is me, Attorney B, with episode 27 of the Immigrants Bridge Show. We're so excited to have everyone here today. And as promised, tonight we are going to talk about options for immigrants that have certain family members in the military. We're definitely doing this um, to highlight um, military service, serving our country. Um, and of course, we have Memorial Day weekend coming up. So we want to thank those who have served and um, for those that are living and for the ones that are not living to thank them also for their service. So we want to welcome everyone. Looks like a lot of people have already jumped on. And you know, the only rule I have is that once you join in the broadcast, just jump on in and say hello so that we can um, acknowledge your presence. So tonight, I am so excited. I didn't even plan this until about a half an hour ago. So tonight, we are going to be joined by a friend of mine that I met several years ago, um, Sergeant Colin Gerding, and he formerly was a recruiter for the Army um, right here in Lake County. So we will be joined by, um, by the wonderful Sergeant in a few minutes. So get ready for an amazing show. I hope you guys have lots of questions because we definitely have answers. So thank you again for joining us. And now I guess I say all of that in Spanish. Hola, familia, give me a second. Let me log in on my cell phone as well. Okay, phone, be nice to me. Okay, phone is being nice. Okay, good. So hello, Juan. Hello, Miss Tracy. Hello, Miss Dawn, Miss Terri Ann, Liliana, Nieves. It's, it's great to see you guys. Thanks for jumping in. I'm a little more casual. I got my Diva shirts on. No, I didn't work out. I, I'm just faking. Okay, so leave me alone. I'm just faking. Um, so just welcome to everyone. Hey, Miss Ashley, I see you popping in there. Hola a toda la gente um, que está mirando la programa. Gracias por su tiempo. Um, estoy muy feliz que usted está aquí con nosotros. Uh, recuerda que me dijo que hoy vamos a celebrar um, el día de recordación para las personas que están sirviendo en la, las Fuerzas Armadas de los Estados Unidos. So, obviamente, queremos dar gracias a ellos por sus servicios. So, hoy es programa número 27 de la programa Puente de los Inmigrantes y soy la abogada B. So, ahora yo estoy muy alegre porque yo tengo un amigo de mí. Um, I check the word. Sargento, I see Arthur here. You're, you're my translator. How do you say sergeant in Spanish? Nice to see you, Arthur, all the way from Boston. Hey, Miss Patty. Hey, Jasmine, nice to see you. So, I want to learn how to say sergeant before I pop Sergeant Colin onto the screen. And he's, he was awesome before, but now he's even more awesome because I asked him if he could do this like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> so <laughs> he's making time for you guys. So isn't that incredible? Sargento. Okay. So, por favor, conmigo dice hola al Sargento Colin y dar gracias a él por el servicio de él en las Fuerzas Armadas, okay? So let's welcome Colin Sarge, um, Sergeant Colin on board. Um, please say hello, and of course, make sure you send him a word of thanks in the comments, thank him for his service, and thank him for his time. So without further ado, I'm going to pop Sergeant Colin in so you can see his gorgeous face just like I am. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> no problem. So let me start by asking you a few questions. Yo voy a comenzar um, y yo voy a, yo tengo algunas preguntas por um, Sargento. So Colin, how long have you been serving in the United States Army? 
¿Cuánto tiempo estaba en las Fuerzas Armadas de los Estados Unidos? I so you have to forgive me because I, I my Spanish is really bad and really small and and probably speaking with a like a southern Spain accent. Um so I'm just going to leave it out. Um I've been in the army after. <laughs> I've been in the army um for coming up on 13 years. Mm -hmm. Um it'll be 13 years in in August. Um I joined back in 2007, but before I joined I was actually an army civilian. I was working for the army. Um doing various jobs here and there, working in radio, working in television. Um, I did child care, a bunch of hodgepodge jobs until I actually enlisted. Oh, wonderful. So, él dice que él está con las Fuerzas Armadas, el Army, por como 13 años eh, en total, pero él estaba como civilian en el pasado antes de ese tiempo, en, en 2007. So, él está en ese, en ese servicio por mucho, mucho tiempo. So, otra vez, en los comentarios, por favor, dice gracias al Sargento Colin. Okay? So, of course, we are so excited um, to have you here. And maybe you can share the, the big news that I found out tonight. Um, what's, so, you've been recruiting for the Army in Lake County. Um, but now you have something new coming up. Would you be able to tell us about that? So, um, el sargento antes estaba como un recruiter para obtener personas para entrar en las Fuerzas Armadas, pero ahora él tiene buenas noticias. So, él va a compartir esa información con nosotros. Yep. So, um, we do recruiting as a three-year assignment to help out the Army and help find people that are willing and able to, to join. Um, my three years is up, so we are actually on our way to Germany now. Um, we're waiting a little bit for the virus to pass so that we have the ability to get over there. Everybody's being very cautious. Um, but hopefully we'll be over there within the next couple months and um, be able to continue our adventure together there. Wonderful. So, um, Sargento Colin está diciendo que um, hace como tres años que él estaba recruiting. Um, so, if you guys want to teach me the word, of course, Arthur's already there putting the word in the comment. Reclutador. Reclutador. So, you were reclutador. Por I'll take it. Las armadas por los últimos tres años. So, pero ahora él quiere... Um, servir en otro capacito. Um, so, ellos van a moverse eh, a Alemania en algunas meses. So, des, definitivamente eso es algo muy triste por mí, porque siempre estoy mandando mi clientes a Colin um, para dar información de, de, de las Fuerzas Armadas. So, I was just telling them, it's gonna, I'm happy for you, because maybe I get to visit you in Germany. Absolutely. I'm bummed for my clients that, you know, we send people to learn information about what it is to serve in the United States Armed Forces. So mm -hmm. what has this, tell us, as someone that is actively serving in the Armed Forces, what's the best part of what you do? What do you love most about being in the Army? So it's interesting. We actually are starting um, one of the jobs that I'm doing now is putting together a video series for our recruiting office. Um, it's something to kind of keep me busy. And that's actually one of the questions that I pose to all of them. So in the next coming weeks, uh, you'll be able to see a bunch of different recruiters answers to that. Um, and on that note, I think it's different for every single person. Um, For me, it's the ability to travel. It's the ability to be a part of something that's bigger than myself. Mm -hmm. um, and it's that every day is a new kind of adventure. Um, there's a lot of mundane things that people do every day, day in and day out. Um, and if I find myself in that situation, it kind of starts to dig at me. So the ability that the army gives me to have something new and new problem sets every day is probably one of the things that drives me the most. And of course the travel, I'm going to Germany after all. Sorry, um, that's a lot for you to translate. <laughs> pray for me y'all. So I have some people saying hello to you. Um, 
Maria, Jonathan, Regina, Veronica, Jennifer, Rosa, lots of people on. Cheryl, that's my sister-in-law all the way from Jamaica. Well, hello? Maybe sister-in-law Jamaica. from Jamaica. <laughs> Maybe Jamaica will be in your travels. <laughs> We're, well, that's the goal. One day is to take a cruise. My wife and I have never been on a cruise. We do a lot of traveling, but we've never been on a cruise. And that's what we've said to ourselves is going to be our honeymoon at some point in our lives is we're going to take a big multi-week cruise and just go and explore the Caribbean and and go and see everything. Okay. So did you know that when I'm not an attorney, I'm a travel agent and I'm the cruise and that's what I do for fun. Book people on cruises because I love cruising. We've heard so many good things about it. We just haven't had it's something that we both want to do that we just haven't had the the time or the ability. And now with the baby running around, uh, it's, you know, we got to find the time. Yeah. I'll help you. So we'll definitely stay in touch. Okay. Fantastic. Good luck. Yeah. Necesito suerte para recordar todo. Pero mi pregunta a Colin fue, you know, ¿qué es el mejor parte del trabajo en, en el Army? So, él está diciendo que cada día es algo diferente y él le gusta que no es, no es aburrido. Él tiene la oportunidad para ayudar a los Estados Unidos en varias maneras. So, eso por él es algo que él le gusta mucho. Um, también, él le gusta viajar. So, you know, ahora él está completa en los Estados Unidos. So, él tiene la oportunidad a mover a él y la, la esposa y, y el hijo de él a Alemania por como tres años. So, él definitivamente le gusta ayudando la gente de los Estados Unidos um, con los problemas que tenemos en todo el mundo. So, eso es el mejor parte del trabajo de él. Y también él le gusta viajar. So, estaba explicando a él que aunque um, yo... yo me gusta cuando él está aquí porque yo mando mucho de mis clientes con él. Ahora quizás yo tengo la oportunidad a visitar a él y la familia en Alemania. So yo también me gusta a viajar. So um, that was awesome, by the way. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start keeping notes so that I can break up my answers so that it gives you a chance to, <laughs> to remember. <laughs> to, yeah. And I think he, he was saying, también él estaba diciendo que él quiere ir en crucero porque ahora él está casado y él quiere un crucero con la esposa de él para vacación. So me estaba explicando que aparte de ser abogado de inmigración, también me encanta cruceros y yo tengo, yo también estoy agent de viaje. Ok, so, y también soy la, la reina de los cruceros. Ustedes me conocen que siempre estoy en crucero. So, yo voy a ayudar a, a señor Colin y la esposa de él para tener una vacación en, en crucero. Eso es un, un placer de mí. Um, let's see what else. So, I will not... I don't know how much time you have, um, but I've got plenty of time. Okay, so I will kind of give my quick five-minute lesson on what options do people have um, if they want to go into the military. Okay, have a family member, and then I can get back and start asking you questions in terms of what are the qualifications that someone needs to have if they're considering joining the army. Absolutely. Okay, perfect. Thank you. No problem. So, estaba diciendo es que yo voy a dar um, la información sobre personas que tiene um, familiares en las Fuerzas Armadas. ¿Qué son los, um, las uh, oportunidades que ellos tienen a quedar aquí en los Estados Unidos? So, yo voy a explicar eso primeramente. Después, yo voy a pedir a, a Sergeant Colin qué son los requisitos si una persona está interesado en um, entrar en las Fuerzas Armadas. 
Específicamente el army. Is there a word, Spanish word for army? Arthur, I said vacacion. I know the word for vacation. I like vacation. <laughs> hey, Stan. It's nice to see you. Stan is an awesome immigration attorney in um, at the top of the state, all right up there by the Alabama border. Attorney Rachel's on, Miss Connie's on, uh, Miss Tiffany's here, um, Melissa, Jose. So you are popular. Everyone wants to see you. They're tired of seeing me. So <laughs> anything I can do to help. <laughs> Great. My wife's tired of seeing me too. So I think this is a break for her as well. I know we're all cooped up at home. Okay, so yo solamente quiere decir que hay posibilidades para personas que tienen familiares um, en las Fuerzas Armadas. So yo voy a explicar poquito de la ley. Y recuerda que eso es información general. So remember that I um, am only going to give general information about one specific part of immigration law. So this is not to be construed as legal advice. It's just something that people can think about. So I work with a lot of people who are undocumented in the sense that they may have entered the country without being inspected or admitted, meaning that they kind of snuck into the party, right? Party crashers. Um, and so they are undocumented. What that means is the only way you can get a green card is if you have a family member that petitions for you and you qualify for um, a waiver of that unlawful entry and your unlawful presence. So the only family members that qualify for this are um, if you have a US citizen parent or spouse. So even though a 21 year old child, US citizen can file a petition for a parent, the parent would not be able to get a waiver because the kid is not their parent or spouse. So because of that, there is no way they can get a green card in the United States or outside of the United States for that matter in general. So um, there are lots of people that are kind of stuck because they don't qualify for that unlawful presence waiver. So generally when I have consultations with people like that, that have US citizen children that are usually younger um, and may have plans of joining the military or are already in the military, we are able to apply for what is called parole in place. Parole in place is granted on a case by case basis. So not everyone's gonna uh, get it. And it's based on the, the discretion of um, the immigration official. And they do that because of humanitarian reason, or it would be a significant benefit, public benefit um, to the United States. Um, and once a person gets that parole, because of the service of their family member, which could be a US citizen or resident, spouse, child, or parent, those categories, they're able to get this thing called parole. So now, even though they snuck into the party and they didn't enter with a visa, they now have what's called a lawful entry for purposes of getting their green card through adjustment of status here in the United States. And for a lot of this affects parents of United States citizens. So a lot of time I call up Colin and I'm like, hey, I have a child or a kid or a young adult that might be interested in this office, in this um, going into the armed services, is this something you can explain to them? What are the requirements? Um, so we've been able to get the benefit of the child going and serving their country, but with the benefit of the parent um, being allowed to stay in the United States while they are serving our country. So it's usually a win-win um, situation. So parole in place is the mechanism. If you have a US citizen or resident parent, spouse or child that is currently in the military or previously served in the military, you may be eligible for parole. Um, we've done that very, very successfully um, 
in the past and we've been able to um, be a blessing to many families that would otherwise not qualify for a green card. Dear Jesus, please help me to remember all of that in Spanish and give me the- We're rooting for you. <laughs> to get through that. So, um, lo que estaba diciendo en, en inglés es que si una persona tiene esposo, esposa, hijo, hija, o padre que está en las Fuerzas Armadas, que es ciudadano americano o residente permanente de los Estados Unidos, e es posible que esa persona puede cualificar por algo que se llama parole in place, ¿ok? La mayoría de la gente que yo habla con ellos, um, ellos entran en los Estados Unidos sin papeles. So, ellos están indocumentados y ellos tienen tiempo afuera del estatus aquí en los Estados Unidos. Por esa razón, ellos normalmente no podría, no puede um, arreglar papeles aquí en los Estados Unidos porque ellos necesitan um, un perdón. De, de la entrada y del tiempo que está aquí afuera del estatus. So, si una persona, por ejemplo, es eh, el padre de un ciudadano americano que tiene 21 años o más, um, esa persona, desgraciadamente, ese padre no puede cualificar para arregla aquí en los Estados Unidos porque ellos necesitan un perdón y no cualifica por el perdón. So, la solución en mi oficina es para hablar con los niños para ver si ellos están eh, eh, ellos está interesados a entrar las Fuerzas Armadas. ¿Ok? Porque si ellos están en las Fuerzas Armadas, los padres pueden obtener esa cosa que se llama parole in place. Eso es como una entrada legal. So, esos padres pueden arreglar aquí en los Estados Unidos y normalmente es menos de un año. So, eso definitivamente es una bendición en dos lados. En un lado, el hijo puede ayudar a los padres que está aquí sin documentos. Pero en el otro mano, um, los hijos um, están servando el país y eso, ellos están dando un, un servicio público a, a la gente de los Estados Unidos. So, por mí, eso es gano gano, ¿ok? Es un win-win. So, um, ok, I, now I, I don't even remember. Um, so, eso es más o menos lo que estaba diciendo, que si es ciudadano, residente, um, esposo, esposa, hijo, hija, o padres, si esas personas están sirviendo en las Fuerzas Armadas o ha servido en el pasado, eso también, los veteranos, ellos también cuentan por razones del parole in place. So, obviously, there are many branches to the military. So, um, Sergeant Colin will be able to speak regarding the Army. So, let's say we encounter one of these families. We have, let's say, parents of American children that, you know, these people have been here for 20, 25 years and they had children here. And now the kids are over 21 and, you know, they can make the petition for their parents and they're very interested in maybe going into the army. What are the qualifications for someone that wants to enter the United States Army? Okay. Uh, so there's a lot um, we have to we have to go over that, but I'll go over some of the basics that would be more important in this scenario. Um, first and foremost, um, in, because we're talking about the citizenship aspect, they either have to be a U.S. citizen or they have to have their I-551 card. Either one of them is acceptable. Um, so that's that's the first thing. The second thing is going to be education. So we need to make sure that um, we have a GED or a high school diploma or college, um, but we have to have one of those completed uh, in order to be eligible. Um, there's height and weight restrictions. Um, those are going to be based on the individual person. So that's where you kind of have to um, sit down with the recruiter and find out. Um, and then the big one that usually gets a lot of people is the test. Um, so... 
in order to enlist, and this is for all branches of the military, you have to take what's called the Armed Services Aptitude Battery, um, which is just a fancy, antiquated way of saying entrance exam. Um, the test is basically, it, it, it's similar to an ACT or an SAT exam. It, it covers a wide variety of information and topics. Um, and then your results in that test will dictate whether or not you're eligible to enlist. Um, that's where we usually have a lot of issue. People will pass everything else. They'll show interest. They'll be excited to join. And then the test comes up and people don't do so well in the test. Um, so that can be, that can be a, deter a detainer for, or a detractor for some people that are out there. Um, there are lots of study guides available for the test. There are lots of um, ways to find help for doing that. Um, but that is a big thing that, that hits, that hits people is the test itself. Okay. I definitely have some follow-up questions on that. So absolutely. Um, if you fail the test, are you able to retake the test? Yes. So okay. the test is administered. Um, you have to either take it. Uh, sometimes they take it in high school. I'm sure a lot of people that went to high school in the States remember all oh, the mandatory or you know, suggested testing. Um, that's one way of taking it. The other way is when you get in touch with the recruiter, they will schedule you to go and actually take the ASVAB at one of our processing centers. Um, if you fail the test, there is a 30 day wait before you can take the test again. If you fail it a second time, there is another 30 day wait before you can take it uh, a third time. After you've taken the test three times, then there's a six month wait if you failed it the third time as well. Um, so then after you fail it for six, after the six months, if you were to fail it again, then it's a year wait. Um, so there's a little bit, yeah, there's a lot of incentive to do well the first time. Wow. But I will say that all recruiters, regardless of the branch, have what we call practice tests. Um, there are ways for us to gauge how people are going to do. We're not just going to say, hi, how are you? Go take this test. Uh, good luck. Like there's, we, we take steps to make sure that we're going to set you up for success and not kind of lead you to the wolves. Wow. And is there an age, a maximum age to enter the army? Uh, age. so yes, there, the, the maximum age right now for the army is 34. Um, we have waivers available. Um, but those are on a case by case basis, similar to, um, what you were saying before. Those are really dependent on if you have higher level education, um, you know, if you're coming in with advanced degrees or specialties, um, they'll consider those waivers for service because you're bringing an additional skill set to the Army. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. Okay, so estaba hablando con Sergeant Colin, um, ¿qué son los requisitos si una persona está interesada en las Fuerzas Armadas, específicamente el Army? Um, número uno, tiene que tener su residencia, su tarjeta verde, o es ciudadano americano, ¿ok? Eso es número uno. También, ellos están um, interesados en su educación. So, por ejemplo, tiene que tener un high school diploma, diploma de, del high school, o un GED, o um, clases de, de colegio, universidad. So, hay requisitos de su educación. También hay um, requisitos del, um, ah, geez, definitely I don't know these words. Uh, help me out here, Arthur. Um, height and weight. So, si está gordita como yo y um, <laughs> short like me and chubby like me, you're not going to get recruited by the army. Okay? That's that's not entirely true. It's so, so we true. work off of we work off of a body mass index. So it's dependent on your age. It's dependent on your height and your your weight. Now, we're not expecting you to be in army shape right off the bat. All right. So they're, they're like the standards that we check new applicants by are different from the standards that I'm held to. I got it. So we understand that people are coming in from a civilian based lifestyle and are coming to be, but in my opinion, professional athletes, because we get paid to, to work out quite a bit. Um, so there, there is some leeway there, but 
Yes. I mean, you can't have starred on an A and E show and then come over here and, and join the army. There, there are certain things because there's health concerns with, with um, overweight. There's also minimum heights. So there's health concerns for minimum weights. You can't be um, overly skinny uh, and overly short. I, I don't know if that's the right way to say that, uh, but there are, there are, they're vertically challenged. I like that one. Um, there are levels on both. And again, it, it's different for every branch. Um, we have it readily available to us. So it's one of those things when you talk to a recruiter, one of the first things they're going to go through is a list of questions. And that's one of the questions is how tall are you? How much do you weigh? So, um, Sergeant Colin, darme más clarificación de los requisitos de estatura y peso. So, gracias, Arthur. Él, él es mi traductora live. <laughs> so, um, estaba diciéndose que, you know, um, you know, para personas uh, gordita y cosas así no puede entrar, pero él está, estaba explicando que Depende de en muchas cosas. So, estatura, peso, edad, todas las cosas ellos van a tomar en, um, ellos va a tomar en, en mente. OK? So, eso es unas de, uno de los requisitos también. Um, él también ha explicado que la problema que la mayoría de las pe personas tiene es pasando el examen. So, hay un examen de entrar las Fuerzas Armadas. So, él dice, dice que, o dice que mucha persona no pasa ese examen. Um, hay guías de estudia para que la gente puede estudiar. Um, pero, you know, aparte de eso, muchas personas tienen um, problemas pasando. So, por ejemplo, um, por ejemplo, el, es, el examen es similar al ACT o SAT, lo que los estudiantes en high school toman. So, no es un examen fácil, ¿ok? Es un, un examen un um, poquito difícil, so tiene que estudiar. So, él estaba explicando que puede tomar ese examen en high school. Es posible que tomar el examen en high school. También me pregunta él es que si usted no pasa primera vez, si hay otra oportunidad para pasar otra vez. So, sí, si no pasa primera vez, entonces tiene que esperar 30 días para tomar el examen el, el, segun, el tiempo segundo, ¿OK? Si no pasa el, el tiempo segundo, ellos van a dar, tiene que esperar otra vez 30 días para tomar otra vez. So, el tercer tiempo, um, si también no pasa, tiene que esperar seis meses para tomar. Si no pasa el tercer vez y pasa los seis meses y tomar otra vez y no pasa, tiene que esperar un año pero hay oportunidades para pasar el examen. Um, de edad máximo, eh, persona que tiene uh, 34 años de edad. So, they're looking for younger people. Ellos están buscando personas más jóvenes. Um, yeah, the, our, minimum, our minimum age is 17. Um, oh, wow. Still have to be, I mean, you can enlist at 17, but you still have to graduate or have already graduated. Um, so the minimum is 17, still requires parental consent. Um, but yeah, 17 to 35 with primarily we're looking for people from that 17 to 24 age group. Um, but honestly, outside of metrics, that really doesn't affect anybody because if somebody walks in as 32 and is ready to go, you know, we're going to do everything we can to help that individual out. Fantastic. So, um, Sargento Colin está diciendo que Um, el mínimo, el máximo es 34, pero el mínimo es 17. Pero si la persona todavía está en high school, ellos obviamente tienen que esperar la matriculación. So, um, y también e ellos necesitan el permiso de los padres para entrar en las Fuerzas Armadas 
si ellos no tienen 18 años de edad. So, um, eso. Let's see. Oh, I do they have to pay to take the exam? No. So the, the best analogy I like to use for joining the military, and I actually just used this the other day with one of my future soldiers. Um, you could be homeless, living under a bridge, have nothing to your name, and be able to do all the process, including join and leave for basic training. You would nothing would be able to stop you. So you don't. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, you know, it doesn't it, to be able to go. I mean, time maybe, but um, meeting with recruiters, uh, going and uh, taking the tests. Uh, usually when it's time for enlistment, we have to put you in a hotel. So you stay the night for all of the processing and everything. That's something that, that we pay out of pocket. You're provided food and stuff like that. So there's, there's nothing that, that you have to pay for. And if, um, we have heard of people claiming, uh, that they had to pay recruiters or somebody posing as a recruiter to do this and that at no point, And this is for all branches. At no point should you ever, ever have to pay anybody to do anything as part of the process. That That's a good point, because there's also always some fraudsters out there. Exactly. Wow. So, um, Sargento Colin está diciendo que no hay ningún trámite para entrar lo, las Fuerzas Armadas. So, si hay una persona di diciendo que tiene que pagar a ellos para entrar las Fuerzas Armadas, definitivamente no. Es, eso es un fraude. So, la persona que no tiene casa, que no tiene nada, ellos pueden hacer um, el proceso. No hay ningún trámite por nada. So, um, eso es un, un proceso gratis para entrar las Fuerzas Armadas. We do, if you guys have questions, um, you can go ahead and um, drop them in the comment box. So, si tiene preguntas, puede ponerlos. En, en, en los comentarios. Uh, Miss Patricia, Miss Patty has a question. If that test is taken in high school, do they have to take it again? Um, so Patty is asking if the test is taken in high school, do they have to take it again? I'm assuming if they pass it when they are in high school, if they have to take it again. Okay, so the um, there's a two year wait on the test or a two year expiration date on the test. So uh -huh. if they take it in high school, um, and they are interested in enlisting within two years of taking the test, they're good. Um, if they have passed the two years, then they have to start over. Okay, bueno. So, la pregunta de la señora Patty es, si una persona toma el examen en high school, si ellos tienen, y pasar el examen, si ellos tienen que um, tomar el examen después de la matriculación. So, Sargento Colin dice que no. Um, el examen es válido por como dos años. So, si la persona entre entre los dos años, um, no tiene que tomar el examen otra vez. Pero si expira el examen después de dos años, entonces tiene que reaplicar y tomar el examen otra vez. Does anyone have any other questions? You're welcome, Miss Patty. Oh, Miss Angeline is asking, until what age are they able to join? We just talked about that, um, that it's up to maximum of 34, right? 34? 34, 30, 30, until their 35th birthday. So okay. they can be 34 up until their 35th birthday. And again, it's all, uh, there's a lot of waivers out there. So if, you know, something has happened in your life, you have a reason why you can explain why you've waited so long. There's a good chance that people, you know, the they're going to work with you um, because, again, it's it's fighting qualified people. So yeah. as long as, you know, you're, you're passing the test, you're doing well, you're physically in shape, you're motivated. You're it, uh, the best thing is if you have that additional education, bachelor's, master's, um, even higher, maybe a doctorate or something, then that's when they're going to be like, OK, I mean, we just had somebody join the army six months ago. That was 36. So it, it's not. Uh, it's not unheard of. Now, if so, you're like 42, 45, that's where we start to get into the little like, ah, uh, maybe not. So you just ki totally killed what I was just going to say. I was going to say, hey, I'm going to be 42 this year. 
I have a doctorate. What can I join? So you fall into a different, you fall into a specialty category. Um, because you are a lawyer and because you have a specific skill set, the same goes for doctors. Those that have those, those very specific skill sets can oftentimes find themselves being able to join, maybe not necessarily active duty, um, but reserve those types of units because those specialties are, are needed, um, specific, specifically in the medical field. Unfortunately, mm. I don't deal with, with that. We have a whole different organization that deals with medical recruitment. Um, but yes, you know, if you are a top oncologist or um, a dermatologist or, or neonatal surgeon or something like that, um, you know, and if you're interested, maybe you're over the, the age limit, they, they have programs to help bring you in and then also to show you um, commensurate pay. So like, because you've been a lawyer for so many years, um, you wouldn't be joining the army and getting the base pay of a brand new lieutenant. Um, they would try to compensate to what you were making on the civilian side, or at least as close to they could to say, okay, you're coming in with X number of years of experience. Okay, pretty cool. So I, I might have some, I might be able to slip on in there. <laughs> now, are there waivers for boot camp? Because y'all would kick my butt. <laughs> so no, unfortunately, no waivers for boot camp. Um, now the reason being is, is there's a lot of misconceptions out there about what basic training is and, and how hard it is. Um, one of the things I like to remind people is that it's, it's 2020 now and the army has been a thing since 1775. Um, wow. that's millions of people that have gone through basic training, right? <laughs> as, as we're talking right now, there are 1.1 million people who serve in the army. That's, that's not the other branches. That's not everybody together. That's the arm, the active duty army, the army reserve and the army national guard. So 1.1 million people right now, as we're talking are serving. So you, you multiply that by the number of years and, and, you know, generations, millions and millions of people have gone through basic training. Some of them stronger, some of them tougher. Absolutely. Some of them nowhere near your level and they still make it through. Basic training is is about finding who you are and about finding some inner strength that you didn't necessarily knew you had. So, yes, there's things that you see in the movies and, and TV shows because that sells. It's good. It's good programming. Nobody wants to see you sit around going, what are we going to do next? What are we going to do next? Here's right. my here's my book of things that I need to read and memorize. It doesn't sell TV space. Right. But, um, there's a lot that goes on and, and yeah, you're going to get yelled at. Yeah. You're going to, you know, endure some things that you probably never thought you would have in the real world. But one of the biggest things that I hear from, um, soldiers, I don't call them future soldiers anymore because they've gone through basic training is that it was a lot easier than they thought it was going to be, but it was also a lot of fun. And the way I like to call it is the most fun you never want to have again. <laughs> like law school. <laughs> <laughs> Then again, I don't know if I should equate fun and law school. Uh, yeah, probably not. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm working on my degree for astrophysics right now. And, and while there are a lot of fun things behind it, I don't think I ever want to do it again. Astrophysics. Wow. That's fantastic. Okay. I totally, I don't even know where to start with that. Um, yo espero que yo recordara a toda esa información. So, um, cuando explica Sargento Colin que la edad máximo es 34 años, yo quiero saber, you know, hay excepciones. Y él dice que sí, hay varias excepciones, especialmente por personas que tienen experiencias como médicos o doctores um, o um, abogados, you know, personas con... Um, uh, um, ¿Cómo se dice? Con especializa especializaciones, ¿ok? Um, so, quizás hay excepciones. So, eh, yo quería saber si, por ejemplo, abogada B quería entrar en las Fuerzas Armadas y yo tengo casi 42 años, si yo puedo entrar. Pero, y él está diciendo que quizás es, es posible, eh, depende, um, You know, so anyway, no es algo serio. Yo solamente quería saber si es, es, es posible. Um, Nieves está diciendo personas con títulos um, especial. 
So, um, también hablamos poquito del bootcamp. You know, la mayoría de la gente pensaba que, wow, lo que vemos en, en, en las películas es que, wow, es muy difícil para bootcamp. You know, es muy duro, um, es horrible experiencia. Pero Colin está diciendo que el Army está, um, está aquí desde el año 1000. Uh, 1770, so casi más de 300 um, años. So hay mucha gente en las Fuerzas Armadas, muchas personas que pasa los exámenes de bootcamp físico, físicamente. Um, so no tiene que preocupar, ok, you know, no puedo pasar el bootcamp. Um, eso es muy divertido. Él dice que específicamente es algo muy divertido que no quería hacer otra vez, solamente una vez y nada más. So, um, yeah, eso es básicamente la información que estaba hablando. So, um, eso es mucho tiempo por um, Sargento Colin. So, estamos muy um, bendecidos para que él está aquí con nosotros antes de salir del país y ir a Alemania. So, por favor, dice gracias a Sargento Colin por el tiempo con nosotros hoy, um, por el servicio a nosotros en las Fuerzas Armadas, sirviendo el país de americanos y personas que viven aquí. Um, so, estoy muy alegre que él está aquí con nosotros. So, I have stolen Colin from his wife and his child with... No, no, the kids are asleep, it's fine. 15 minutes notice. And he spent 50 minutes with us, so I don't want to keep him any longer. But I definitely want to say I am very appreciative of your service and everything that you do. Um, of course, we have a personal connection as well, um, and that is something that I greatly value. I wish you nothing less than God's best for your life and you. your family. And I look forward to seeing you in Germany doing amazing things with your life. Thank you very much. I appreciate you having me on here. This has been fun. So if you ever need me to come back, absolutely. A little bit more than 20 minutes notice would be preferable, but it is what it is. And, you know, the Army teaches you to adapt and overcome. So I'm fine with that. Um, the one last thing I kind of wanted to, to throw out there for everybody Um, while my Spanish skills are not there, um, my language abilities fall in English and Greek and, and more on the French side. Um, we do have recruiters that are speak multiple languages. So specifically in Florida, we have a lot of recruiters um, that speak Spanish, um, different dialects of Spanish. Um, so, you know, it, it is one of those things that if people are interested and they feel more comfortable, you know, I've done it where I go into a house and I know the kids are going to be able to speak Uh, English uh, just fine, but sometimes being able to get those parents to understand and be able to speak and, and understand because you're dealing with, you know, somebody's children. Yeah. Um, I've taken other recruiters with me um, that speak Spanish and are able to go in there and, and have that conversation. So um, if it is something you're interested in, especially, you know, if there's a language barrier, contact your recruiter. They'll find somebody. We have, like, we don't have anybody in our office that speaks Creole, but we have a couple of them down in Orlando that we use um, and they've always been willing to sit down and work with us and, and speak with the Haitian families and um, make sure that everybody is just fully understanding what's going on. We're not trying to hide anything or keep anybody in the dark. We want everybody to know what's going on. So, mm -hmm. And now that you're not going to be in that Leesburg office anymore, is there a new point of contact? If we do come across people that are interested, how, what's the best way to um is it the same honestly you just contact the office you can um they have facebook pages um if you do a google search uh you'll find them um all of them in there are, are phenomenal um if you do have the language concern then then absolutely you know just let them know on the phone um that you would like to either speak with somebody who speaks a specific language um and you know they'd be more than willing to help out but we have a, you know my office right now is, is a very eclectic group of people i've got Panamanians, I've got um, Puerto Ricans, I have a guy from West Africa, he's actually our boss, the station commander. Um, one of our recruiters grew up in the Virgin Islands, um, and she lives here now. 
Um, you've got me who grew up in Greece and Germany. So uh, there's just, there's a big group of people out there. So, you know, you can always find somebody that you can relate to and can probably help you figure out the information you need. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm definitely still going to miss you though. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate everything you guys have done for us That's and my family. That's been amazing. You, you are more than welcome. So, um, el señor Colin, um, quería decir que si una familia quiere hablar en otro lenguaje aparte de inglés, um, los reclutadores um, habla varios lenguajes. So, por ejemplo, aunque el niño habla inglés, quizás los padres quieren hablar en español o creole o otro lenguaje, es, es posible. So, um, no te preocupes que no, no, los padres no pueden entender lo que está pasando. Si quiere um, información en su lenguaje, es disponible a la gente. So, ahora, porque Colin no está en la oficina de, de Leesburg, yo voy a buscar otra persona que yo puedo tener una conexión y um, yo puedo dar esa información a mis clientes que está interesado a las Fuerzas Armadas. Okay. So, um, I think that's it. All right. I don't see any other questions. Thank you guys for, um, for doing this. We have lots of people shouting you out. Thank you, Sergeant Colin. Sergeant Colin, thank you so much for your service and for the freedom that we now all enjoy. Thank you for your service, Sergeant Collins. Blessings to you and your family. So we are definitely grateful for you. And all Thank that you guys so much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Well, guys, this is the end of episode 27 of the Immigrants Bridge Show with Attorney B. And y'all know what tomorrow is. Tomorrow is our immigration happy hour slash Memorial Day barbecue. So you guys are going to see me cooking some jerk chicken on the grill in my backyard. So if you are fortunate enough, and you know, you're, you're a friend of mine and you know where I live. Y'all can pass by for some jerk chicken, all right? You may see that's coming by the, the car tomorrow. <laughs> you're rolling <laughs> down a window. <laughs> you more than, you more, you're more than welcome. Um, so tomorrow's show is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to talk some immigration. I'm going to teach you guys. If you want to learn how to make jerk chicken, I will teach you how to do it, okay? I'll teach you how to be Jamaican. So eso es mañana. Um, so, mañana está, estoy diciendo que recuerda, es la hora feliz um, de inmigración y también un barbecue um, con yo. Yo voy a cocinar um, jerk chicken, pollo de jerk de Jamaica, porque soy de Jamaica, soy jamaiquina. Um, y yo voy a enseñar a ustedes cómo puede preparar el pollo de jerk de Jamaica. So, mañana va a ser muy, muy fun, muy divertido. Um, yo voy a tratar de convencer a mi esposo para jugar música, um, pero, you know, yo voy a tratar. So, I was also saying that I will try to convince my husband to actually play some music because last week I did play music, but then I got in trouble for it on Facebook. So, we'll, we'll, I'll try to convince him. I'll, I'll try to be nice to him so that he will provide us with some live music. Miss Terry says she will be there in her bikini. I will not be in a bikini because I don't I think it's supposed to storm tomorrow. <gasps> Are you serious? Yeah, I mean we went on a we went on a boat trip yesterday because it looked like it was the only day that of the week that it was going to be good weather here. But I may be Are wrong. You... I mean weather changes all the time. So today it was supposed to thunderstorm and we got a little bit of rain for like half an hour. So it's Florida, you know, the weather is bipolar. Seriously, Florida, the one freaking weekend we get. Yeah. <laughs> Typical. Typical. It's 2020. It's coming for us. It is definitely 2020. <laughs> Seriously, I Diosito yo quiero. Mm. Okay. All right. I, I I will come off of my my rant. Rant over. I love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. for episode 28 of the Immigrants Bridge Show, where we'll have our immigration happy hour. Ciao.